Far-right hooligans who assaulted Owen Jones last August in an unprovoked attack have today been sentenced. The incident took place at 2 a.m. outside a North London pub where Owen had been celebrating his birthday with friends. Um, James Healy from Portsmouth, who had at least nine convictions relating to football hooliganism stretching back to 1998, was sentenced to two years and eight months in jail today. And The Guardian had these details on the judgment made of Healy. Let's get these up. So the judge described Healy as a man holding extreme right-wing opinions who attacked a victim who did no more than hold opinions on which the defendant did not agree. And then we've got some quotes from the prosecution led by Philip McGee. McGee prosecuting said Healy possessed a greeting card which bore Nazi far-right extremist terror symbols, including those associated with the far-right Combat 18 group, one of whose tenets is kill all queers. Also discovered was a Nazi SS flag bearing a Totenkopf death head skull symbol, plus a number of pin badges, including a circular pin badge with the lead the way and whatever it takes motto of combat 18 and a badge that says Chelsea FC, no asylum seekers, completely gross stuff. Um, the two other men who took part in the attack were also sentenced and they were Liam Tracy, 35 from Camden and Charlie Ambrose, 31 from Brighton, both received an eight month sentence suspended um, for two years. I'm joined by Owen Jones now. How do you feel about the, the sentences? Are they strong enough? Uh, um, I don't see prison as a solution to far-right extremism. It, it isn't a solution to fascism. Fascism, the far-right, are political problems. They're not judicial problems. They can't be defeated by custodial sentences. Um, we can't just treat this as thuggery uh, out on the streets. Obviously, there was a political context uh, to the attack. So I suppose, I mean, look, I'm not going to start camping outside prison going free James Healy, the Nazi one. Um, we have a prison system which disproportionately locks up uh, people who are poor with mental distress, people who are of colour, people uh, who are imprisoned because of the war on drugs. And um, my wider point, though, is, you know, this shouldn't be a focus on, on, on me. Um, this was in my own case, certainly uh, just the most extreme example of a pretty relentless far-right campaign in terms of being uh, on the streets, um, harassed, uh, repeated attempted assaults, lots of death threats, harassed whilst doing my job, uh, including on air. Um, but we've got to remember that, that, that there are those from minorities, as well as on the left, who are targeted by the far right, who don't have my profile in the media as a white guy. Um, and there are people from minorities uh, who are being targeted, uh, harassed, abused, and indeed attacked, and worse. People have gone through far, far worse than I have and don't get this attention or coverage. So if we think about this was judged to be a homophobic crime as well as a far right crime, uh, homophobic crimes have surged, reported uh, hate crimes have surged by half in five years. Transphobic hate crimes but have trebled. That's the tip of the iceberg. The vast majority of hate crimes are not reported. Um, and similarly, there's been a surge in racist hate crimes, hate crimes which are categorised as motivated by religion, uh, Islamophobic hate crimes, anti-Semitic hate crimes. They have all surged. And um, we do need to have that focus, not on me as this white columnist at The Guardian who was uh, attacked by someone with quite an extensive collection of Nazi memorabilia uh, in his house. But we've got to broaden this out. And the reason that's important is, far, you know, when we, we have a discussion in the mainstream media, who radicalizes Islamist extremists? We talk about hate preachers and who they happen to be. In the case of the far right in this country, those hate preachers have mainstream platforms in the media, entire media outlets, mainstream politicians who have whipped up bigotry and hatred against Muslims and other minorities and who have vilified the left as terrorist loving, Britain hating, dangerous extremists. Actions have consequences and just one other example during the election. Remember that supposed punching of a conservative advisor, which never happened, which several broadcast journalists amplified before then deleting uh, with often pretty mediocre apologies to accompany them. Did we hear, how many of you, be honest, how many of you heard about the two Labour activists, both in their 70s, one of whom, they were both beaten up during canvassing, one of whom uh, had alleged, uh, well, had apparent 
broken ribs as a consequence, a woman in her 70s. How many of you have heard of that attack? I would say very few. And the truth is the left are constantly demonized and portrayed as an abusive rabble, often because of mean tweets. We hear about cancel culture because of celebrities often being criticized online. But when you get an actual far right threat, which has killed in this country, which has attempted to kill, which has been responsible for terrorist plots, and which has violently assaulted people worse than myself, it just shows, doesn't it, that the lack of focus on this menace uh, and, and the threat it poses to minorities and the left, instead just this focus on vilifying the left, which has fueled this, this in the first place. So you, you said that you don't think, you know, far right activism, activists, this kind of very toxic politics, we all agree on that. Uh, the solution isn't sending people to prison. What, so what is the solution? If, if everybody was to do what you think is the, is the right thing, how do we go about changing this and making sure this doesn't happen? In the broadest sense, obviously, our justice system doesn't rehabilitate. I do think that, it's, you know, we do need, when it comes to the far right, to organise in our communities, to organise on the streets, uh, to, and also to challenge uh, the those who are complicit in radicalising the far right. And that, as I've said, is in the mainstream media and, and within the political elites. And to deal with often uh, the despair and misery of a broken economic system that far right extremists feed upon. But equally, of course, we have to invest in rehabilitating. And you can do that with far right extremists as well. I don't want James Healy to spend the rest of his life being this far right thuggish loser. I think it's tragic. In a, what's happened to him? He uh, obviously was so full of hatred because I'm gay and because of my political opinions that in one moment he launched this attack and now has to pay with a prison sentence, which is very earliest, will have him being released November 2021. Didn't have to do that. What, what's led him to this path? I mean, obviously he's got quite extensive violent history. But obviously, you know, I'm not being all wishy-washy. Fascism needs to be confronted and defeated and has been responsible when in power for tens of millions of deaths and across the world over the last few years, several terrorist attacks which have killed huge numbers of Jews, Muslims and other minor and black people, Latinx and, and many others. Um, so I'm not being all wishy-washy, liberal kind of let's all sit around singing Kumbaya. But equally, you've got we've got to have a strategy, to, you know, when, when extremists like this in the same way we talk about other violent offences to invest in rehabilitation and de-radicalisation. We don't do that in this country. And actually, if you look at the prison system at the moment, where often radicalisation takes place, we get people being radicalised with far-right extremist and Islamist extremism within the prison complex. There is a danger. I don't think James Healy, no offence to him, I mean, he's having a torrid time as it is, he's bright enough to go around radicalising the British prison population. But, you know, he could be even more radicalised in the prison system. Uh, so we need to invest in actually doing that. I mean, there was this case, the London Bridge attack last year. Remember when a uh, horrific attack uh, when uh, two people who worked in rehabilitation to young people were, were attacked by Islamist extremists. Apparently in the years he'd previously been in prison, he had like a few hours invested in de-radicalization. So far. So I think we need to invest in that. I prefer James Healy, you know, I don't, instead of being locked up, if he was actually thrown into an intensive rehabilitation uh, system, I would prefer that just doesn't exist. Finally, do, do you think there's a danger this is going to become a free speech issue? I'll, sort of, I'll clarify what I mean. So you sort of alluded already to the idea that you know there are people, well, liberal from the, from across the political spectrum, I suppose, who who've written, written these open letters talking about how um, the climate, especially on social media, people judging what they're saying has has inhibited people's ability to speak freely about stuff. Um, they're normally talking about you know condemnation in Twitter replies. Do you think that the threat of far-right attacks is at a point whereby people are going to start self-censoring because they don't want to you know, put themselves in the firing line? Well, that is a danger. And I worry as well that people would draw that conclusion from my own experience. And I've, I've been very clear, and I said this to my you know, friends and people who are close to me who, uh, fair enough, often get concerned. And they should be concerned as well for themselves because... You know, I, I wasn't just attacked that evening. You know, three others defending me were also punched in the head. Uh, so unfortunately, I've become a, a threat, including to to you guys. If you, when, the next time we go for a drink, there's always that threat lingering in the air. Sorry about that. Um, 
But I think, you know, it's very important, firstly, that, you know, I would never let them live in my head. I didn't feel scared whilst I was being attacked, like your thing to say. Never going to be scared by these people, never going to be intimidated. But that is a danger. There's lots of different ways you could respond to this. And it's understandable if people were attacked that they'd start to self-censor. But they are winning fascists if they do that. And the reason I've been frustrated with the so-called cancel culture debate, you know, there was a Times article the other week which put together lots of random different phenomena under the bracket can cancel culture. They included R. Kelly. R. Kelly is an alleged paedophile and someone who allegedly sexually assaulted young women. Uh, that was thrown in to a couple of actors who got criticised on Twitter. Now, if a term is being used to, ju to, to describe someone who is currently going through the justice system for alleged paedophilia and people who have got some Twitter mentions which are critical of something they have done, I think that term is redundant. But what is very striking is, whilst we've heard JK Rowling using a very, very big platform to say things which undoubtedly impact on a marginalised uh, community, and I will use my words carefully there because JK Rowling, of course, signed that letter on free speech a couple of weeks ago and has now sued a kid's website uh, for the way it described her comments on trans people and trans rights. Um, so it just shows the hypocrisy of the whole thing. Um, but at the same time, what it, it is striking that we hear a lot about, oh, no, you know, people can't say anything and they're being shut down because people are criticising them online. Whilst, I'm not getting a violin out, but this violent attack was just one of repeated, you know, people can see the videos online of me being harassed and targeted by far extremists whilst doing my jobs. Ash Sarkar of Navarra fame of this parish. She herself has been repeatedly vicious, uh, viciously attacked by far extremists who hate the fact that she's a woman of colour who's a million times more intelligent than them, uh, an articulate fighter for justice uh, for people who don't have a voice, who terrorise her, try to terrorise her, uh, including when she posted a picture of an orange lice lolly and three oranges reflecting her orange bike handles. Uh, and uh, bike seat, um, trying to claim that she was glorifying the uh, terrorist, alleged terrorist attack against three gay men in Reading. Uh, and then she got a load of death threats and violent threats. They are trying to hound us out of public life. And the other point, it is important to make, it winds people up of a certain type, but it is the lived experience of me and others, and I'm not going to airbrush it, is it is true that I talked about how far right, uh, well, mainstream right-wing commentators and politicians help radicalize these people. And that is undoubtedly the case. When they speak of saboteurs and traitors uh, and, and call the left terrorist-loving, Britain-hating, dangerous extremists, when they do all of that, they're playing with fire. But what about some people, and no, not all, but some people who call themselves moderates and centrists, who use both sides' rhetoric, who essentially call the, the left in a quite a broad term, but in a broad definition, as just as bad as the far right, which is Trump style both sidesism, but in practice reserve far much more attention and bile for the left. And I find, and Ash gets this, and others get this as well, often when I'm attacked in inflammatory ways by these so called, this grouping of, of, of so called moderates, they're often being retweeted by fascists. And I just don't know if those people look at that and realise or, or consider that might be a slight problem. Because it's, I'm not saying, by the way, oh, you can't criticise the left. I don't think that's ever going to stop. And that happens on a daily basis. And of course, that cr scrutiny and debate should happen. But when you get some people who call themselves moderate, who have utterly vilified and become obsessed with vilifying the left, uh, and we can see that playing out this week in lots of different ways, they were just driven out of public life and are using quite extreme and inflammatory language to do so, they are mainstreaming or, or legitimizing far more extreme elements who take their cue and go, well, even these so-called moderate people hate these people, which means these people are fair game and they've got a massive target on their heads. And I would say to those people, you are playing with fire and from whatever happens from here on in, not just to myself, but to others, in terms of what we now have to face as a consequence of the existence of far right extremists, if you are fueling that radicalization against the left, the attempt to delegitimize the left as an acceptable, legitimate political force in Britain, you are helping to radicalize these extreme elements. And that's not just right wing commentators and politicians, it's some people who regard themselves as far more moderate, indeed, some who, who are in the Labour Party itself. And 
there's nothing I can do to make them stop it, but they should be aware of it. And for whatever happens from here on in, there needs to be a public record because it is a reality that can't be ignored. Thank you.